We've seen this example that looks at the fertility rate and life expectancy for countries in 1962 before. But there was something on the graph. This is the exact same graph that was given to us earlier in section 4.2. There was something on there that I bet you missed at the time, which is the R squared value. It's right here. As a matter of fact, R squared is what the standard um, attachment to a graph is. So when you ask Excel or Google Spreadsheet to attach the equation and the R squared value, right, those are the options. It doesn't have R. So if you remember, I mentioned earlier that R squared really shines in showing the strength of relationships. And that's why those programs automatically give you R squared. See, it is useful. <laughs> Okay, so what is R squared? Well, the R squared, which is also capital R squared, again, computers often use capital R just for clarity, is 0 0.5189, or if you like, 51.89%. Lovely. That's the coefficient of determination. Coefficient of determination, never want to forget, the, these, these always get confusing because they both have the word coefficient in them. Coefficient of determination is R squared. Now they want us to compute the correlation coefficient. That's r, not r squared. So you want to keep those two terms straight in your head. Well, r is just the square root of r squared. I mean, that's all there is to it. So, But it is plus or minus. We have to choose the correct one. It was mentioned right here. So we have to choose the correct one based on the slope of the graph. right? or slope or the graph, but we have both. So we're going to write that down. So recall that r is plus or minus the square root of r squared. And we have to choose based on the slope. Which, when I look at this graph, I can see it has a downward slope. And I can also see the slope right there is negative. That negative right there in front of that 4.6711. All right, so that means I'm definitely going to choose the negative version. <laughs> All right, so that means for us, so r is the negative square root and we always use the decimal, never use the percent. Percents are just, um, percents are used for the script. The decimal is used for calculations. So I'm going to use the 0.5189, never the percentage. Percentage is used for the script. Percents are decimals, but they say it, when you say it that way, when you say it as a percentage, it's a way people understand better. I mean, if you say, oh, 0.5189 of this data is explained, you'd be like, what? But if I say 51.89%, everybody's like, oh, I get it, a little over 50%. Got it, right. Because these percentages are how we talk about decimals because decimals are a little abstract. All right, so we have to be able to find the square root to do this. Um, and I'll just mention a note here. We chose negative because the slope was negative. Okay. All right, so now to find the square root, let's go to Desmos. In Desmos, the square root symbol can ha happen two ways. One, you can pull up the palette here, the keyboard, and it's the one that looks like a little check mark next to the pi symbol. So you pull up that little check mark, or in the keyboard, and you press that little check mark, and you say 0.5189, you'll have it. And if you want, you can put a negative sign in front of the whole thing, and there you really have it. Me personally, I'm too lazy to bring the keyboard up. So what I'll do is type the negative, and then I'll type the, word, the letters S, Q R T square root get it S Q R T is the square root and then I can type 0 0.5189 and it knows what I want so either way all right this is negative 0 0.720 
right? So if you type SQRT in Desmos, it will bring you that square root symbol up. So you might want to make a note of that. Again, you don't have to. You can use the, the, the keyboard if you like. I just don't. I just use this SQRT. All right, now let's do the interpret again. Well, that interpret is going to be that script for R squared. And we're going to follow it exactly, and we're going to use the percentage now. So we'll say 51.89% of the total variation in now why right if you look at the script it says why in quotes and it says bottom below give it context so it's right here it's the life expectancy it's the y variable so total variation in life expectancy life expectancy of a country in 1962 is explained by the least squares regression model. I think in the script I wrote line, so that's fine. You can you can write it exactly the way I wrote it. Again, this is your percentage written that way, right? Write as a percent, write a percent. Right, not a decimal. The decimal is used for calculations here. The script uses the percentage. Then the Y part is all of this stuff. Life expectancy of a country in 1962. That is Y in context. And then the rest of it is literally the script. This is the one script we never stray from. We just write it as it is. All right, part D, a politician from another country sees our data and results for our life expectancy and fertility rates. She determines that to get a longer life expectancy in her country, she should just restrict the number of children to one per woman. That's it, everybody should just have one child. What's wrong with that reasoning? And the answer is, well, <laughs> correlation is not causation. We can see that this is a strong negative relationship. And it is, right? This really is real data. And a country that has a higher fertility has a lower life expectancy, at least in 1962, right? But that's because there's something else going on. All right, so correlation is not causation. In an observational study, which this must be, it's not like we can go out and lower the life expectancy randomly for different countries. And the reason we can't figure out correlation or causation of coming from correlation is that there are lurking variables. Such as. Now here's the key that a lot of students forget. A lurking variable has to affect both the X and the Y. So you have to think of a variable that would affect the fertility rate of a country in 1962, as well as its life expectancy in 1962. Well, there's a lot of different candidates. <laughs> such a, So you could put in, um, one of my favorites is infrastructure. Right, infrastructure is all the buildings and wires and you know the fact that things sometimes people would take for granted, like your house has plumbing and your house has electricity um, and there are roads that are passable and, you know, those kinds of things. And now, of course, in modern times, the internet is available and things like that. That's all built on infrastructure, that you have functional roads and functional bridges, functional um, water systems. That's infrastructure. So countries that have poorer infrastructure tend to be over here, lower life expectancy, more fertility. Um, you could think of another one such as the income level of the country, the GDP of the country, right? That's what GDP is ostensibly measuring. GDP stands for gross domestic product. It basically means, hey, 
altogether, that's gross. That's the old definition of gross. Old domestic, gross domestic product. Gross domestic product. Domestic meaning in the country, domestically product produced. So GDP is a measurement. It's not a very good one. If you take an economics class, you can find out about that. Um, of how much stuff, oh, my dog is barking, sorry about that, how much stuff your country makes and produces. But you can see if a country has a low GDP, they're a poorer country, right? Poorer countries were over here in 1962. They had a high fertility and a low life expectancy. You don't have to list all of these, by the way. Usually in a problem that's asking you about this, you just have to think of one good one. But remember that it's something that has to affect both the X and the Y, and that's what a lot of students forget. They'll think of something that just affects life expectancy, like the number of doctors, but they won't think of things that affect the fertility rate as well, right? So note, you have to think of things, right, lurking variables that are valid affect both the X and the Y. Right. The X in this case being fertility and the Y being life expectancy. A good lurking variable has to or should affect both of them. 